Hello and welcome to part two of the video series where I'm covering the Supra removable hard disk drive. Uh, if you haven't seen the first part uh, you might want to go and take a look at that. Um, you'll see there a video where I um, inadvertently may have caused the issue that blew this power supply up here. Um, it was pointed out that this jumper link here uh, that I thought was broken um, and I joined this up uh, I thought was broken but it sounds like it may have uh, well just about definitely has been intentionally uh, set that way in the factory um, and that is a jumper link that provides um, bypassing of one of the capacitors so if if the jumper link is broken like this uh, the two capacitors here these two uh, run in series which suits a 240 volt system uh, if they're joined if this jump is joined then effectively it bypasses uh, from my understanding anyway I might be wrong here but it bypasses this capacitor and uses mainly just this this capacitor here for 110 volt uh, so just a single capacitor so what I did is I joined this and being a 240 volt system it's actually loading the whole hundred, uh, 240 volts into this capacitor here alone and it overloaded it so um, yeah unfortunately uh, just when I took a look on the board there I assumed that that jumper should have been joined I've never seen a jumper like that uh, before I would have assumed there was uh, some sort of other way of setting the 240 or 110 volt uh, systems uh, but anyway you, you live and learn I I'm just hoping I haven't done any damage to the um, to the actual uh, drive here and I'd like to um, thank Electron Ash for his suggestion um, that brought my attention to that issue um, and there's been various other people on the um, YouTube comments that have been very helpful as well so anyway I've got here a ATX power supply and cable running here through to this uh, power connector in the back of the drive here that's just a standard Molex power connector there so just straight into the back of the drive and I've also run from here uh, the 5 volts that's required to run this board here so uh, moment of truth I'm going to fire this up and hopefully uh, this drive here will make all the right noises and not emit any smoke that would be helpful okay uh, I've got the disc inserted here that was um, inserted when it when the power supply blew up or the capacitor blew uh, so I'm hoping that you know the disc is okay and not contaminated with any uh, well smoke or soot residue or anything like that it doesn't appear to be much in the wall any soot um, but as you uh, may have seen in the video there was quite a bit of smoke so I'm hoping it hasn't uh, contaminated that um, so everything's ready to to go here so I'm just going to power up this here that's normal and drive sounds fine just going to leave that to run for a little bit before I hook it up to the Amiga um, I'll hook it up to the Amiga and see if the disc reads okay ready to turn it on again it's hooked up to the Amiga there plugged in Okay, 
Now I do have a brand new power supply coming for this super drive. It's um, XP Power is the brand. So it's a um, AC to DC 5 volt and 12 volt power supply. Switch mode power supply. So um, that should be here in a week or so. So that'll I'll install that in the drive and uh, that'll tidy things up a bit. So um, crank up the Amiga here and I'll show you what we've got. Okay, this is very promising. That is the SideQuest drive. Reading fine. Well, that's a relief. Uh, the drive's not damaged, that's great. So the drive's been running for about 10 minutes now, no problems whatsoever. So um, I'll demonstrate a file copy. I'm going to copy from this SDH0, which is the SideQuest disk, to a zip drive. And um, this also sort of ties in with part of the archiving and backup project that I'm working on. And uh, you may have seen that in the videos relating to the zip drive that I did earlier. So I've got a zip drive disk here. Okay, and you could actually see there that I've actually already backed this disk up. Uh, but for this demonstration, I'll do it again just so you can see the drive activity. That's right. Back up one is the drive. Yep. Okay. So backing up from SideQuest to disk, uh, to zip disk that is. So I'll just get a quick shot of that. So the SideQuest drive, the Supra drive, is sounding a lot better than it did when I first initially plugged it in for the first time in probably 15 years if not more um, as I said in the first video at least I think so I um, can't quite remember now because I've got a bit of a shock when it did blow up um, I replaced a resistor that looked a bit cooked on the bottom of the actual uh, SideQuest drive itself the controller board that looked a bit cooked and um, uh, tested all the caps with an ESR meter, um, it's equivalent series resistance meter, and all the caps look fine, no problems whatsoever. And so I refitted them, and obviously, uh, joining that link was a um, very bad thing to do. And thankfully, I haven't um, blown up this nice little Supra drive, removable hard drive here. So I'd just like to say thanks again to um, Drop Dead Frederick, Electron Ash, and Laurent Drew for uh, very helpful comments. And there's also others as well that contributed um, comments, which were very helpful. Um, so yeah, thank, thanks very much. Um, led me in the right direction as to what the problem was. So that's a pretty happy outcome, I think. Um, the next thing I want to try and do is actually work out how to boot uh, off one of these discs, the SideQuest discs. I'm pretty sure it can be done, judging by the labels on some of the discs. Uh, some of them do say bootable. Um, so yeah, uh, keep an eye out for, the, for part three. And thanks very much for watching.